Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I am glad that you joined us today. I'm going to be joined by Dr. Mike Apley, and we're going to talk about managing pregnant heifers in the feed yard. It's a topic that comes up from time to time. Thank you for watching the show, and we're going to be back right after this message. It must be a, a, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and, and the reason we do it has been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Folks, this is Dr. Mike Appley, and he's a professor here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and he is a boarded clinical pharmacologist, but today we're going to talk about something from his previous life as a practitioner and talk about managing bred heifers or pregnant heifers when they get in the feed yard. And, you know, I, I kind of did a little bit of review before the show, and about 16 to 20 percent of the heifers that come in the feed yard are bred, and 10 percent of those that are bred are what we call long bread or further along in gestation. And, and I think it's hard for people to understand the concept. One out of five heifers coming in is, is pregnant. So what are some things that, what, what, why would that be a problem? Well, it becomes a welfare issue because we want to treat these heifers as well as we can in the feed yard. And we don't want them to calve in the feed yard. And so those long breads are a real challenge because calving in a feed yard with a heifer is not our ideal situation. Uh, the short breads, even them, uh, even if they may not calve in the feed yard, when they go to the packing plant, we lose a lot of performance in there because a lot of energy, a lot of feed has gone into producing that calf and into producing the fluids and the uterine tissue and everything else that goes along with that. And uh, so it's, it's not doing well for any of us. Yeah, when they, they say when they take out that slunk or when they take out the, the fetus and the gravid uterus and the, that's 115 pounds yep. at, at the time of slaughter in some of these, these animals that they're, that they're slaughtering. So animal welfare, animal health, and decreased performance, which de all of them wind up meaning decreased beef consumption and meaning <laughs> decreased uh, profitability when we look at performance. Absolutely, and you know when you're selling on a heart carcass weight, if you have 10% pregnant heifers in a pen, you think what that does to your yield versus oh. what you put the feed in, it just absolutely destroy your yield. And you know, I still go back as a veterinarian to the primary thing is I, I hope we can do everything we can that they don't come to the feedlot pregnant. And then when they do, really interested in absolutely minimizing the effect on that heifer of, of them coming in which requires some pretty intensive management and a commitment to seeing that management through group after group after group. Yeah and, and I go back to my time in practice I'm looking at you know not only do we ha they're not supposed to be having the calf in the feedlot but then the retained placentas the the you know the mastitis issues that can happen but the the big one are the downed heifer mm -hmm. and and the dead heifer I mean, it, people don't realize that these heifers can't have the calf. This isn't a uh, cow-calf operation where we're where we're checking them all the time, and it's a it's something that that uh, you know when they aren't assisted and they they're in there overnight, it's a it's a big problem. And and getting back to guaranteed open heifers and heifers coming in open is going to be a big deal. It's a really big deal. All right. Well, let's take a break. 
Okay. Then when we come back, let's get into some of the, the drugs and, and the reasons why we use them, and we'll get into some of the programs. Excellent. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Dr. Appley and I will be back right after these messages. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Dr. Randall Spare is president of Ashland Veterinary Clinic, the largest veterinary practice in southwest Kansas. He focuses on bovine care, especially cow-calf production, and at AABP in 2013, he received the award for developing an outstanding preventative medicine program for beef production. A graduate of K-State School of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Spare and his wife Michelle have five children. Some call it a come-from-behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD-TV. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Apley, who is a friend and colleague here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where we both work with beef cattle and, and do a lot of production medicine type work with feedlots. And, you know, we were talking during the break about, you know, this is a pretty sensitive issue. And it's one of those that, you know, when people start talking to us about animal welfare and food safety and environmental stewardship, and you know, it's easy to talk about all the successes because we, we do such a wonderful job of tending to our livestock and, 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 and doing the right thing. And, you know, this is, this is a, a sensitive area, but if we can't, be open and transparent about issues that we have and successes that we have, it, it kind of becomes a one-sided street. So even though this is a sensitive area, we still, uh, it's, it's something that we need to address as an industry. And when you have the opportunity to come on the show, we, we need to take that opportunity to visit. Well, and one of the big issues about it is it, it's a transitional issue between uh, a part of the industry and another part of the industry and right. we do everything we can to keep those really synced up and what we can do back here that's best for up here which allows them to do what's best for back here and so yeah it is a really important one to to address so that everyone through the whole breadth of the industry is aware of the effect of them yep yep so let's talk a little bit about the differences so you know i hear the term short bread and long bread <laughs> and short bread is not like shortening bread or no nope, yeah. not at all <laughs> this is some shortbread heifers and some long bread heifers what's kind of your cut off there about 100 days and so 100 days gestation yeah 100 okay. days gestation and actually when a veterinarian's preg checking cattle it it's really a pretty good place to make a break a break too because you know at 90 to 100 days that uterus disappears way down over there the cotyledons get a certain size and so it's one of those sizes where you can kind of come back up and go, oh yeah, it's about 100 days, and then move on from there on up as long bread. So, talk to me a little bit then difference of what's going on physiologically. You know, progesterone is the hormone, folks, that maintains pregnancy. And before 100 days, progesterone is coming from what's called the the corpus luteum. Okay. And the CL is uh, responsible for generating that and maintaining the pregnancy. And then once we get beyond 100 days, we start to transition where the placenta is creating uh, the large 
a large percent of that progesterone. So in dealing with those pregnancies, after 100 days, we also have to take back that that placenta is also producing progesterone and not just the corpus luteum. Right. And that's how, you know, I, I had a, a group of heifers once that were spayed that had calves. And the reason was is they spayed those heifers after they were 100 days uh, in gestation and the placenta was producing enough progesterone on its own to maintain that pregnancy even though those ovaries had been removed from the body. And that's one really important thing for viewers to understand is that when you spay a heifer, you just take the ovaries out versus if they take their dog or cat in to be spayed, they take the uterus and the, and the ovaries too, so it's a big difference. Yep. Well, when we come back, let's get into some of the programs then that we're going to do for some of the shortbred and some of the longbred heifers um, when we want to abort or, or, or preg check and abort these heifers in the feed yard so that we can prevent some of the issues that we talked about earlier. Hey, folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Dr. Apple and I are going to be back after these messages. Stay tuned. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high risk cattle or treating BRD. I'm Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. For today's tip, we're gonna talk about proper vaccine storage and proper vaccine handling. It's very important that we store our vaccine in a refrigerator, that you monitor the temperature on, such as this. We have a thermometer in the fridge where we can actually monitor it. You'll be surprised at how refrigerators can fluctuate up and down and get outside of that normal storage range. Also, when you're shoot side, we want to make sure and store our vaccine in a cooler. And we don't want to mix up any, any vaccine until we're ready to use it. The longer this vaccine's mixed up, the more it degrades over time. So preferably we get vaccine used up within 30 minutes to an hour. It's also very important that when we mix up our vaccine that we use a properly stored transfer needle, one that's clean and stored well. This makes for a handy storage case to store your transfer needle. Make sure it's always clean and taken care of and stored properly. That's all we have for today. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batril 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batril 100, right the first time. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Your cattle are often at risk of respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. But MPB Guard vaccine can help prevent those problems early. MPB Guard delivers proven efficacy against Mycoplasma bovis. Even on young calves just 45 days old, it also gives you the convenience of an initial two-dose sub-Q vaccination series. So help guard your cattle from costly respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. Just ask your veterinarian about MPB Guard vaccine. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mike Appley. We're from Kansas State University, hence the purple, purple. pride, baby. And um, we're talking about managing bred heifers in the feed yard. Went through the numbers of them, some of the problems, and then how we determine short bread and long bread. So now let's talk about, let's, let's make the determination. I mean, one thing you can do is just do nothing. And that's, you, a lot of things pay consequences, the heifer and the, the performance, so yeah. Right, so if you buy these heifers cheaper and they wind up with some pregnant ones, um, we can preg check and abort the heifers. Mm -hmm. And so going based, back on, based on the physiology, talk to me first about what are we going to do with that, that shortbred heifer. That shortbred heifer, we're usually very effective with just using a prostaglandin, an injectable drug that goes in and uh, 
shuts down that corpus luteum, which right. is what's left on the ovary after they ovulate and release the egg, then the corpus luteum starts, maintains pregnancy, and we can interfere with that pregnancy by administering that drug. So we're going to give them like, Ludolice. Yeah. Ludolice, Prostomate, those are the, Prostomate's the generic. PGF2 alpha. Prostaglandin. It's generic. And one of the things to keep in mind when administering that, one of the things these prostaglandins do besides our intended effect is they can constrict vessels around them. So even more than usual, it's very important we pay attention to cleanliness of our injection system or the syringes and the needles that they're absolutely spotless because that prostaglandin being injected, if not done correctly, is you can create some injection site problems if there's any contamination even more than regular injections. So it can be administered in a safe and effective manner. We just have to really pay attention to our process as we do it. Cool. Well, so shortbreads, we're on, we find one that's bred less than 100 days gestation, one shot of prostaglandin F2 alpha, lutelized prostomate, and, and, and do it right at time of processing. Now let's move to that long bred heifer. Long bred heifer, we're gonna to have to add some dexamethasone okay. to help shut down that placental contribution and uh, mimic the fetus saying, I'm ready. And I think that's one thing that's really cool is people, you know, they ask, why does the cow, right before the storm, why do they go have the calf? And not only the, the fetal cortisone, when that fetus gets too big, it gets stressed and it produces cortisol and that triggers the cow then to, to, to have the calf. Yep. And when we have the storm, we get not only the big calf, but then we get that cow getting excited and getting nervous and anxious and we get the cortisol. So when you give them dex, that's what we're simulating? Yeah, and we simulate that and then those two together are effective. And um, so, you know, some will go out to like 150 days thinking that that's the window. Some will do everything longer. But as you go past 150, you know, there's a potential for some decreased effect out until the very last part. But as I understand it, it when we look at the ones that are long bred, our chances of being effective in the protocol decline as we go longer versus a short bred. So the, the longer the pregnancy, when we have a chance to interact with it, uh, the less our, our chances of being really effective the first time decrease. Cool. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the long bred heifers, and we're also going to talk about some of the interactions with respiratory disease. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be back after this message. Hi there, folks. Dr. Dan from K State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow calf stocker or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4 H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. 
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Mike Appley. We are here from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine and we not only have on the purple shirts, but when we're injured, purple band-aids are in, in vogue now and uh, <laughs> probably start marketing those here for too long. <laughs> yep, those will be the next commercial. <laughs> anyway, folks, we've been talking about a uh, sensitive op uh, topic, bread heifers in the feedlot. And when we left, we we're talking about those long bread heifers. And, you know, we're going to give something Dex. Talk a little bit to how you recommend we, we do that and when we do that. Well, usually if we have long bread heifers, we like to not try to abort them right at initial processing. It's the highest stress time we can possibly have. So we may wait a week or two weeks, even though that puts it further along. It allows us to get them past the stress of moving in, getting acclimated to the new environment, getting used to possibly new pen mates, and get them up on feed a little bit, make sure that's taken care of. Because dexamethasone can be a pretty good immunosuppressant. Uh, at the dose we use, for the heifers, if you give that three days in a row, that's a model for uh, downplaying the immune system that's used in research. So one time is important. Very significant. And, yeah, and even then, uh, when stacked on top of other things, we worry about whether or not we may uh, increase the likelihood of uh, having some respiratory issues or other issues with them. And, and that brings up another very important point with the long bred heifers is that once, they're, uh, once they have the drugs administered, we have to bring them back and check them. And oftentimes that's in a week, somewhere around there. So they're kept up close where we can do that or marked. In to make way. sure that they've aborted. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people, if they're uh, taking the switches off tails, may just leave the long breads long. And you go out and you get them and you do them. And then you go back and get them and to check them later. But you have to make sure whether or not they've successfully aborted or not. And then we used to put a, a dangle tag inside yep. the lot tag too that would dangle down so it was easy for the cowboys to find them. Find them. Yep, because we've got to see them back. We need to check. Probably not going to have 100% efficacy, so we need to identify the ones that didn't and either uh, know how far along they are and if they need to go early or if uh, so that we avoid calving in the feedlot or uh, we address it by maybe another attempt. And then we also need to check if they have aborted that they, uh, their placenta was expelled right. okay and everything. So a heck of a lot of management involved in handling these girls, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, also getting those, those uh, heifers to the point where, you know, where we aren't complicating them with respiratory disease. And, you know, sometimes people think that when they give the abortificant that it's going to happen right now. And it's usually a 48 to 72 yep. hours before we're going to yep. see expulsion of that fetus. So, you know, even if you wanted to keep them up in the hospital pen until that point. Yeah. So it's, it all comes down to it's a management intensive process. We're committed to doing it right. Our best way forward would be to not have them. Yep. Let's get some guaranteed open heifers. Well, folks, that's the end of the show today. Thank you so much for watching us. Mike, thanks, as always, for being on the show. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian in devising these types of protocols and, and which types of programs you want to use. And if you want to know more about what we do here at K-State, you can find us on the web at www.bet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm very thankful that you watched the show today. 
Stay tuned with Doc Talk as the few coming weeks, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vetmedica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust.